Tobias is taking Nora, his daughter, to see the troll peaks in the mountains of Romsdalen in Norway. According to legend, these peaks were formed when 13 trolls gathered for a wedding but got so drunk that they lost track of time and turned into mountains. Nora doesn't believe in fairy tales anymore, which upsets Tobias. He tells her that it's important to believe in something in order to be able to see it. Nora, now an archaeologist, is leading a team on a digging expedition on the Atlantic coast of northwestern Norway. Despite having found no significant discoveries after six months and facing financial challenges, Nora persists in her search. The rest of the team is ready to abandon the project, but Nora remains determined. Nora's determination ultimately leads to a major discovery, as she finds a dinosaur skull, prompting a celebration among the team. Meanwhile, a construction group in the Dover Mountains is working on building a new railway by digging through the mountains, which has drawn the attention of activists who oppose the destruction of nature. However, their concerns are disregarded, as the explosives are set off to begin the tunnel. A deep growl from within the mountain causes a collapse, and some of the workers are unable to escape in time. Upon detecting the incident and the resulting seismic activity, the Norwegian Armed Forces dispatch a reconnaissance aircraft to investigate. Sigrid, responsible for managing the cameras on the aircraft, assembles a series of visuals to present to her superiors, who determine that the situation is significant enough to notify Prime Minister Barrett. As Barrett travels to the base, they are informed of the destruction caused by unknown forces and shown images taken by the reconnaissance aircraft, which Barrett's advisor Andreas believes show footprints. While Barrett finds the idea amusing but implausible, they assign Andreas the tasks of keeping the press away from this information and finding scientific experts who can assist with the issue. A helicopter arrives in the midst of Nora's celebration and requests her presence for a matter of national importance. Upon arriving at the base, Andreas greets Nora and brings her to a secret meeting with Barrett, military leaders, and several other scientists to discuss the possible causes of the incident in the mountains. Upon introducing herself as a paleontologist, Nora is not given much credence as dinosaurs are thought to be extinct and therefore could not have caused the incident. While the team does not rule out the possibility of a military attack by another country, currently the evidence points towards a geological explanation for the event. As pictures of a crater and indentations on the landscape appear on the screen, the scientists offer theories such as sinkholes or underground pockets of gas as possible explanations. Nora interrupts to note that the craters clearly resemble footprints. But her suggestion is dismissed as foolish, as footprints would imply the existence of monsters. As the team continues to discuss possible explanations, Sigrid interjects with live footage of the incident that they obtained by hacking into the phone of an activist. The video, which shows the extent of the destruction, causes the group to pause. However, before they can return to their previous theories, Nora asks Sigrid to play the video again in slow motion. The roaring sound in the background sounds like an animal and there appears to be a large and mysterious humanoid shape in the shadows among the falling rocks. In Lessier, an old married couple is puzzled by their dog's excessive barking. Suddenly, the whole house begins to shake, causing the couple to flee to their basement as everything starts to collapse and the power goes out. After the shaking subsides, the couple discovers that their house has been completely destroyed. However, their dog is safe. Meanwhile, at the base, the leaders are unwilling to accept that the footprints could have been left by a giant creature. Nora emphasizes the need for action instead of continuing to argue for hours. Barit is impressed by Nora's attitude and appoints her as the official scientific advisor. She is then asked to join Andreas in traveling to Lessier to investigate the latest incident. While on the helicopter, Andreas asks Nora about her background as a paleontologist. Nora explains that she has always had a passion for nature and, as a child, became fascinated by the idea of discovering real monsters underground. This interest eventually led her to pursue a career as a paleontologist. Andreas admits that he wants to be a writer and is excited by the possibility of supernatural causes for the current incident. However, when they arrive at their destination and see the extent of the damage to the landscape, Nora is shocked and interrupts Andreas. The military is already securing the area and Nora is greeted by Captain Christopher, who shows them the tracks that came from across the river and into the valley before ending two miles south in the mountains. The soldiers conducted a thorough search of the area but were unable to find any additional clues. Nora interviews the old couple and learns that they were unable to get a good look at the creature because it was blocking the sun. However, they did hear a loud, sorrowful howling sound. Nora then examines the damage more closely and notices a strange, strong smell that she dubs hypernature. In an effort to find biological traces, Nora uses UV light but only finds earth and stones. She requests to be taken to the location where the tracks abruptly end and uses a thermal scanner to search for signs of life. However, the scanner only detects the mountains and no signs of the creature. Given that the creature is too large to hide or disappear, 
Nora wonders if it might have the ability to camouflage itself. As Nora begins to form theories about the creature, she is still uncertain. She takes Christopher and Andreas to see her father, Tobias, who greets them with a firearm when he sees strangers on his property, particularly an armed soldier. Once Nora helps him realize that she is his daughter whom he hasn't seen in years, Tobias agrees to let them in, but first needs to put on some pants. Tobias' house is cluttered with paperclips and research materials related to his obsession with finding a mythical creature known as a troll. Nora stops him from discussing all of his theories about the existence of trolls and the suppression of witness accounts, and asks him to focus on the footage she shows him. She believes that his previous work may contain some clues. Tobias, who is very familiar with the mountains, agrees to help. However, he believes that the footage confirms his theory about the existence of trolls. When Nora points out that scientists would have already discovered troll DNA if they were real, Tobias reminds her that the Christianization of Norway led to the suppression of mythical creatures. He claims that he was institutionalized after he tried to reveal the truth about these creatures. When they reach the location where the tracks stopped, Tobias notices that the topography does not match the maps and is clearly incorrect. Suddenly, the smell of hibernation Nature fills the air and the sky darkens as the mountain behind them reveals an eye. It turns out that both the father and daughter were correct in their theories. The creature is indeed a troll, and its ability to camouflage itself allowed it to blend in with the mountain, explaining the discrepancy in the topography. As the team watches, the troll stands up and roars at them, causing the team to run back to the helicopter in order to escape. Despite their hasty retreat, they are able to capture the troll on camera. When the base receives the transmission, they can no longer deny the truth about the creature's existence. Christopher brings the group to his military camp in order to contact the base and report their finding. Nora continues to refer to the creature as an unknown creature in order to avoid appearing crazy. But Tobias interrupts her to reveal that it is a troll that has been disturbed by the construction in the mountains, which he views as a mockery of nature. The leaders dismiss Tobias as being crazy and ask him to leave. When Nora requests more time to investigate, she is also ignored. The leaders are concerned about the safety of their country and decide to proceed with a military operation. Nora is angry with her father for ruining the opportunity and wants to leave, but Tobias convinces her to stay by explaining that this is not a fairy tale and they need to take the situation seriously. Nora recognizes that simply using weapons and sunlight will not be enough to deal with the troll as it has awoken alone and is scared. Using weapons will only make it more angry, and nature will always push back against such aggression. Nora agrees with Tobias' assessment and decides to stay. Their next challenge is to convince Christopher to allow them to join him in the operation. Initially, Christopher refuses to allow them to join the operation, but after Nora pleads with him, he agrees to allow the trio to hide in his helicopter as long as they promise to follow his orders. By the time the military operation arrives at Heidel, night has fallen. As they wait for the troll to appear, Tobias and Nora reminisce about the old fairy tales they used to share during their adventures and finally reconcile. The troll appears a moment later and stops moving when it gets close enough to their location. Tobias is sure that the creature is aware of their presence. Despite Tobias' warnings that attacking the troll will only make it angry, the soldiers open fire on the creature. As predicted, the bullets and explosions have no effect and only serve to provoke the troll, which begins attacking and destroying everything in its path, including the cameras transmitting the operation to the main base. Everyone starts running away in an effort to escape the troll's rampage. The team takes cover behind a tree with a wounded soldier, but as they prepare to move away, the troll reaches down and grabs the soldier, intending to eat it. Tobias explains that the troll probably smelled the blood from the soldier's wounds. While Nora, Andreas, and Christopher want to run away, Tobias decides to approach the troll and try a friendly approach. To everyone's surprise, the troll stops moving and responds to Tobias' general words with peaceful groans. Unfortunately, not all of the soldiers were aware of the peaceful approach. A truck opens fire on the troll once again. And when the creature counterattacks, it accidentally hits Tobias in the process. As the troll walks away, Nora rushes to her father's side and finds him mumbling the words the palace, the king, home before he dies. He asks his daughter to remember to believe in the existence of mythical creatures. After returning to the base, Nora distracts herself from the pain of losing her father by reviewing his research and searching for a solution. When Andreas and Christopher check in on her, they tell her that the troll has been lost for the time being, but the army is preparing for an airstrike. Nora believes that this attack will have the same ineffective result as the first one and suggests that they need to think creatively. According to fairy tales, trolls are supposed to dislike sunlight, but they have observed this troll coming out in daylight. The only other clue they have is Tobias' mention of how the trolls were destroyed during the Christianization of Norway, which gives Nora an idea. She contacts Barrett and the others to propose using bells as a means of defense, based on the story that trolls would throw boulders at churches when they heard the bells ringing. 
The leaders find Nora's suggestion to be ridiculous, but Christopher intervenes and reminds them that nothing they have tried so far has been effective and they need to consider alternative options. Reluctantly, Barrick gives permission for the plan to proceed. Shortly after, the troll reappears and approaches the Hunter Fossen family park, causing a panic among the crowd. As people start running away, a little girl remains behind to watch the creature. Christopher and Nora arrive in a helicopter, guiding a hovercraft that is carrying giant bells. They surround the troll with the bells and make them ring, causing the troll to retreat due to the sound being painful to its ears, as Nora had predicted. However, the troll also doesn't hesitate to attack in self-defense, causing the helicopters to crash. As one of the helicopters is about to fall on top of the little girl, the troll surprisingly grabs the helicopter to save her before walking away. This event, which took place in a public location, has now made the existence of the troll known to the entire world, and it is making its way towards the capital city. News about the incident is covered by media outlets from every country, and phone recorded clips of the event go viral on social media. When the team returns to the base, a furious Barrett ignores Nora's suggestion that they should try using the bells again from a different angle and instead kicks her out of the base. As she is leaving, Nora runs into Christopher, who confesses that he thinks Barrett is making a mistake and offers to be there for Nora if she ever needs anything. During a conference room meeting, the military leaders inform Barrett about the existence of some dangerous missiles that have not yet been officially approved. Barrett is shocked that she was not aware of this, and Andreas argues that such weapons should not even be considered. This remark earns Andreas a dismissal from the room, since Andreas is not being taken seriously. He decides to quit and join Nora on his way out. He tells her to get ready because they are evacuating the city. Shortly after, Barrett appears on TV to officially announce a state of emergency and asks all citizens to cooperate as the soldiers take over to prepare for the next operation and assist with the evacuation. Nora and Andreas are traveling in the same car and become stuck in traffic. During this time, Nora continues to review Tobias' research. The pages mention something about a gatekeeper, which prompts Andreas to suggest that it could be Rickard Cindy the Lord Chamberlain at the Royal Palace. Nora suddenly remembers Tobias mentioning King, Palace, home before he died and concludes that they need to go to the Royal Palace. Andreas drives them to the palace, where they are stopped by the guards at the gate. However, Sinding immediately comes to let them in because he anticipated that Tobias or someone related to him would arrive at some point. Sinding explains that he respected Tobias, even if Tobias hated him, and his persistence allowed him to be one of the few people who discovered the secret beneath the palace. In the past, it was considered good luck to build a palace on top of the home of another king. It turns out that this particular palace was built on top of the former home of the Troll King. Nora and Andreas are taken to a tunnel full of troll bones, and Sinding explains that the Christianization of Norway led to the destruction of anything that opposed their faith. The royal troll family was ambushed, and only a baby was spared in order to lure the king into the mountains. The king was then locked inside a cavern and left for dead. Twelve years ago, Tobias discovered this and Sinding sent him to the loony bin in order to protect the secret. Sinding expresses remorse for his actions, but still believes it was the right thing to do, which angers Nora. Nora realizes that this is not the time for an argument and that Tobias was correct. The troll king is coming home to the palace, and they need to stop it. While examining the bones, Nora notices that her UV light is causing damage to them, which means that the stories about sunlight were true after all. They have seen the troll during the day, but it has not been exposed to direct sunlight due to the clouds and the mountains. Andreas points out that they cannot control the sun, but Nora has a plan and calls Christopher for assistance. He will set up a special trap while Nora and Andreas lure the troll into it. Meanwhile, the troll has arrived at the city and the military's attacks are ineffective. Barrett approves the use of missiles. Sigrid notices that the leaders are preparing to launch the missiles and calls Andreas to warn him, which means they need to find a way to buy time. Andreas asks Sigrid to try to hack into the military's system to stop the launch, while Christopher sounds the alarm throughout the city. Sinding also helps by instructing the guards to place one of the troll skulls on the largest truck they have, which Nora and Andreas will use to drive around the city and lure the troll away from the palace. It takes Sigrid a few attempts to access the system, but once she succeeds, she immediately stops the missiles, giving Nora and Andreas the time they need. As the troll approaches, Nora and Andreas reveal the skull on the back of the truck, causing the troll to roar in anger and chase after them. Nora calls Christopher to let him know they are on their way, prompting him to give a motivational speech to his soldiers to keep them brave when the creature arrives. While driving through the streets of Oslo, Nora and Andreas manage to reach the highway, but accidentally lose the skull in the process. The troll stops running to pick it up and lets out a painful, grieving groan for its children. It then notices its reflection in a building and stops in its tracks. The troll tries to touch the glass, but it breaks and the sudden noise startles the troll, causing it to drop the skull, which shatters into a million pieces. 
This makes the troll furious and it roars in pain, causing Nora to feel sad for the creature as it is the last of its kind. The troll then seeks revenge and chases after Nora, prompting her to go back to her original plan of trying to escape and avoid the destruction caused by the troll. Sigrid's hacking is discovered at the base and her computer is taken away in order to restart the system. Shortly thereafter, Nora and Andreas arrive at the base with a trap and jump out of the truck in order to lure the troll to the center, where it steps on the vehicle. The troll then tries to step on Nora, but at that moment, soldiers activate a circle of UV lights that surround the creature and begin burning it. The plane carrying the missiles is approaching, but the pilot hesitates when he sees civilians on the ground. A debate ensues at the base about whether or not to abort the mission, leading Sigrid to punch the person who doesn't care about the citizen. As a result, the operation is effectively cancelled. Rit and others at the base watch on their screens as the troll slowly dies and Christopher's soldiers celebrate the victory. However, Nora is unable to bear the sight and sound of the troll suffering and turns off the power to try to save it. The soldiers prepare to shoot, but Nora stops them and approaches the troll, just as her father did, gently asking it to return to the safety of the mountains. The troll considers her words. But before it can respond, the sun rises and burns the troll until there is nothing left but rubble. As everyone celebrates their victory, Andreas jokingly suggests a name for the new hill they've created, and Nora decides to call it the Tobias Boulder. When Barit arrives, she thanks Nora for her efforts. Andreas then reminds the Prime Minister that he has quit his job and plans to become a writer. After Andreas walks away with Nora, he begins to wonder if there may be more creatures hidden in the mountains. At the same time, deep in the mountains, something is starting to stir under a pile of rocks. Watch next and see how a young soldier who has newly returned from war gets caught up in a drug bust and recruited by the authorities to go undercover in a notoriously dangerous prison in order to bring down the corrupt prison warden. Please subscribe and turn on notifications to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.